Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to lovely Aspen, Colorado. And Jaguar was kind enough to bring me out here to test drive this, the brand spanking new 2017 Jaguar XE. And I had the chance with my driving partner, Craig Cole from AutoGuide, to drive it to the top of the world, to the top of Independence Pass. And that driving review is coming up right now on the Fast Lane Car. Hey guys, I am here with one of my favorite YouTube reviewers, Mr. Craig Cole from Auto Guide. You're too kind, you're too kind. Thank you for joining me, and we are in the new Jaguar XE. We are. And I'm gonna put it in sport mode, and I'm gonna put this little flag. Forgot to grab the Monroni here. Get we, the need Monroni. The, we need the facts. Yeah, give them the facts. This is the 2017 yep. Jaguar XE. Yep. We're in the 20D all wheel drive prestige model. That means four corner traction and a diesel engine. Sweet! So we got two liters of displacement under the hood. It's turbocharged, of course. And it's good for 180 horsepower and I believe 318 pound feet of torque. And how much is this bad boy? Out the door, 55, basically 55.5. That includes destination and delivery, which is almost a grand. So and we're here in my backyard. Beautiful dri backyard. Driving up Independence Pass just outside of Aspen where Jaguar brought us to test drive actually this on the F-Pace. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's F. I thought it was pace, but that's my mistake. Yeah, F pace. And on the way out, we just drove uh, the 340 horsepower supercharged gasoline powered, yeah, V6, yeah. And that was fast. We did an impromptu zero to sixty time up here at elevation. We got about 6.5 seconds. Yeah, with two guys in the car at however many 10,000 feet, maybe. Yeah, yeah, we're heading up to 12,000 feet yeah. right now. And Jag claims it'll do it in about 5.1 seconds. So that's at, at right. a lower level, I believe. There are several engine choices, and this is by far my favorite. It's a 3-liter supercharged V6. Now, the one that Craig and I are driving is the new 2-liter diesel. There's also a 2-liter gasoline engine, but if you're going to go for a Jaguar, I say you go for the supercharged one. This XE competes with other entry-level European sedans like the BMW 3 Series, the Audi A4, and of course the Mercedes-Benz C-Class. What makes this unique? Well, it's a Jaguar, so you won't see one in your neighborhood. It also has a relatively unique all-wheel drive system. It can appropriate up to 90% of the power to the rear wheels, making it feel and drive like a rear-wheel drive car. I would say immediately from behind the wheel, it feels a little bit tighter than the 3 Series. I'm, I'm a little, I'm a little, well, it's like a space tighter, space yeah, wise. It's, yeah. I think it's a sexy car. I think it's a very good looking car, but it feels a little bit like a suit that's one size too small. Exactly. You know? Even on the passenger side, there's a bit of a bulge in the trans tunnel here that kind of, it's not bad, yeah. but it does intrude just a little bit. Yeah, yeah, you know, I, 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 love just, the, I love the way I look at it, but I'm kind of, uh, looking forward to getting out of it. <laughs> Look at my head. I mean, it's, it's You're gonna, basically hitting the headliner. I'm hitting the headliner and I've got my seat as far down as it'll go. There are now five cars that are part of the Jaguar family lineup. There's this, the new XE, which competes with the BMW 3 Series. And of course, there's a new F-Pace, which I test drove earlier this week. If you want to watch that review, all you have to do is click on me. Now, style-wise, they all look very similar. They're all very sleek, they're all very stylish, and they're all very modern. I like the look of the F-Pace, but this is also a very handsome car. And we've got, we've got this kind of uh, elephant skin, which I'm not a big fan of, if I'm being honest. I think... Yes, the soft materials on the dash. Yeah. They're fine, but they're not appropriate for the class, I don't think. This would look good in like a Ford Fusion or a Camry or something. Yeah, it's true. The, the Mercedes yeah. has really raised the bar, and Audi is gorgeous. This is more kind of BMW practical, but a little on the uh, plain Jane side. What bothers me more, though, is that it doesn't match the plastic they have on the doors. It's a little The, the graining is a little bit different, you know? I, yeah. I wish they that's made good, it that's, match. That's a good catch. Yeah, this is it's, like rough elephant skin. This is like baby elephant yeah, skin. Yeah, this is the... The newborn pack of dirt, right? <laughs> so you've got the engine specifications, and there are three different engines you can get in this vehicle. Yep, you got we got the diesel, of course, which you can get with rear or all-wheel drive. We've got the all-wheel drive here. And horsepower and torque? 
180 horse, yep. 318 pound feet of torque. It's good. And the quick, the quicker version, the non all-wheel drive version, they're claiming a zero to 60 in about 7.4 seconds. We were estimating maybe eight and a half, maybe nine up here. Very informal test, of course. Yeah, this is the one that's the fuel economy yeah. model, right? This is the one that, that they're using to get cafe numbers. Which, TBD, they have not figured it out yet what the car is going to be rated at, but I would bet you'd be, you would have no trouble getting mid-30s yeah, on this sure. thing. Yeah, for sure. No issue at all. Yeah. So there's the diesel engine, uh, but then you also get you can get a two-liter turbocharged gasoline four-cylinder. That's got 240 horsepower, 251 pound-feet of torque, and they claim that uh, that'll do zero to 60 in about six and a half seconds. Yep. Uh, a little bit quicker. And then there's the canyon carburetor. That's the one I love. The three-liter supercharged V6. Oh yeah, 340 horse, 332 torque, zero to 65, uh, pardon me, 5.1 seconds for both rear and all-wheel drive. I'm really having a lot of fun driving this. You know, it's a little on the pokey side. I'm floored right now and you'd have a hard time telling that, but if you want the Canyon Carver, go for the supercharged V6. But you know, uh, dynamically, it's actually pretty engaging. I've got mm -hmm. it in sport mode, which means that the car changes uh, the suspension around a little bit, it changes the shift points, it changes, well, it makes the electric steering, it makes the wheel heavier, if I'm mm -hmm. being honest, right? Love but it. but it's very tossable, I mean, it's very neutral, it inspires confidence, I feel like uh, I have no um, issues uh, with these somewhat tight turns, uh, and the car likes to dance, dude, it really does. And we and part of the reason for that, I'd say, is the heavy use of aluminum in this game. It's something, 80%. probably about 80% yeah. aluminum. There is some steel in it for cost and other reasons, but um, have aluminum intensive, like much of Jaguar's lineup, or all of it, rather. And it makes the car lighter and, and drive better. It also has a relatively unique all-wheel drive system. It can appropriate up to 90% of the power to the rear wheels, making it feel and drive like a rear-wheel drive car. Yeah, you should tell them about the all-wheel drive system because I think yes. that's part of it too, right? I'm, I'm getting this feel that I'm in a rear-wheel drive car. Let me flip to the page. Yeah, yeah see what I lost they say about it. <laughs> Navigation. Give me a moment. Uh, this handy dandy book that. Uh, 300 page book, Torque Vector. Here we go. Yeah. Okay. So, with the all wheel drive system, which you tell me earlier, they actually developed in house. Yeah, it's an in house system. Yeah, they It's didn't... amazing. Not, I mean, a lot of times you just call up like Hal next and say, hey, right. give me an all wheel drive system. And these guys built it themselves. Yeah. That's cool. But it, okay, so in normal driving conditions, 90% of the torque goes to the rear wheels, 10% is up front, which is great. It gives you that nice canyon carving uh, balance that you want. Get the tail out a little bit, although with the diesel, I don't know. So much tail. Enough. <laughs> tail out drive we're going to be doing, yeah, yeah, I agree. Enough oomph to do that. Uh, if, there, if you're on a slippery situation, it's going to send about 50-50 front to rear. And then if you're really in trouble, it'll do up to 90 to the front, 10 at the back. So you can shuffle that torque around as necessary. And I think that's what makes it seem sporty, because you, you, usually with an all-wheel drive system, especially when you're starting to push it, you start to get either neutral or you get understeer, right? Mm -hmm. And understeer means that um, the front end starts to plow a little bit. This doesn't happen. It feels, it actually feels like you're going to get more oversteer. The back end wants to come out. Mm -hmm. Jaguar will say that in their F-Pace, which has the same system, you can actually uh, go drifting. Oh, yeah? In yeah. a crossover. In a crossover. Crazy. But it's because of the way that the system works. So yeah. I'm assuming that would be the same for this vehicle. Now, Jaguar, once upon a time, was part of the Ford Luxury Group. Mm -hmm. And then when the old... With Volvo, like, Aston Martin. And then when the whole auto industry melted down, um, Ford sold them to an Indian company called Tata. Mm -hmm. And Tata did something unusual. They invested a lot of money in the brand, but here's the interesting part. They didn't give them any more money, and they said, you guys have to survive on your own. Mm -hmm. And in order to do that, Jaguar decided to do a full line of cars. So for a long time, Jaguar only had three cars that they sold in America. Yeah. And now they have five. Yeah. So you've got, what is it? The base, the XC is going to be the base yes. model, which we're in now. Yep. Then you go to the XF sedan. Yep. XJ is like the flagship. Then you've got um, the F-Type yep. and then the F-Pace. Yeah. So, so you've so. got... Blanking out for a second. Yeah, you've got a complete line of cars, and last year they only sold about 15,000 units, which is what, just a little bit over a thousand a month. Yeah. And as you were pointing out, Toyota sells what, 400,000 Camrys? 430 or something last year is insane. Yeah. It's yeah. Like, and last it's month, insane. actually, Jaguar increased their sales by 80% on the strength of 
this car because it's already on sale and the F pace. So um, it's a smart move. You know, there is a sense of cost cutting in here. There's, it's a little bit kind of um, compared to especially the C class or even the Audi. The C class is gorgeous, but yeah. I suspect it's a lot more expensive too. Yeah, but the good news is they've. This used to be the slowest navigation infotainment system. Now they've got a new 10.2 inch screen, and it's actually very fast. They changed the processor and made it actually usable. Yeah, and the the interface seems to be pretty cleanly laid out. Now, Roman, you were telling me you weren't a big fan of the layout for the secondary controls, the climate in particular. I just find that they're uninspired. Yeah. This car, you know, as which is weird because like the exterior of this car is actually very beautiful. Ian Cullen, the designer, who's done you know last several Jaguars uh, has done a fantastic job in bringing kind of this car into the 21st century right mm -hmm. it, it got a little stodgy right with the uh, old designs they kind of went retro in a kind of a bad way uh -huh. the s-type you remember that right yeah it, well it, they had the big giant chunks of, uh, of the wood on the dash yeah. the J gate shifter it's yeah just a exactly. yeah and then, then the big you know there's, there's actually did you know this See how good your trivia is. Mm -hmm. You know, this is a Jaguar, right? Okay, yeah. And there are two symbols that they use. Okay, they have the leaping cat and right, the well, face cat. The right, cat no, very face. good. You, and you know what those are called? Oh, the, the, the leaper? Yeah, that's okay. right. One's Did a leaper, I, okay. and what's the one that's like on the wheels oh, of this That one? I have no idea. I've the never, growler. The growler? Yeah. Okay, I've never heard that before. No. Yeah, yeah there's a leaper Makes and, sense. and a growler. <laughs> I wish they'd bring back the, the leaper on the hood, the chrome. Yeah. That, like, Six or eight inch long jag on the hood, yeah, and it would just like impale the pedestrians. Yeah, yeah, yeah. up the ass of this bicyclist. Yeah. <laughs> he wouldn't appreciate it, but it looks cool. It looks yeah. really cool. I, I actually have to uh, raise my hand here because I did own an old X Type. Did you? I bought an X Type, actually, I leased an X Type for three years, and I gotta admit, the thing that got me over the hump of actually signing the paperwork was the Leaper because it was so badass. That was that was the Mondeo, right? <laughs> it was the a really badass Mondeo, yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> They've come a long way from the Ford days. Yeah, and here's some, some more trivia. This was a winning strategy. So I bought the five-speed, or I, mean, it was, I think it was a five or six-speed sport model, right? Mm -hmm. Which was only available in the least in the less powerful the engine. Five, <laughs> yes. V6. Yeah. Yes. So the sporty model, which had like didn't have all the chrome on it. It was all. Yeah. Um, color coordinated uh, was actually the slower engine. <laughs> Same. And, and actually speaking of um, kind of perceptions of Jaguar, Jaguar has actually done a really great job in changing their reputation around. If you look mm -hmm. at JD Powers, it's no longer at the bottom. Yeah. But people don't know that. They don't. The quality dramatically better. Yeah. And another thing that they offer is called Elite Care. Yeah, it's oh, about that. So so you buy a new Jaguar. Yeah, yeah, they may have had it a year or two, but yeah. you 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 um you buy a new Jag, you get a five year, sixty thousand mile guarantee. Basically, that's a new vehicle limited warranty. You get twenty four hour roadside assistance, complimentary schedule maintenance, so oil changes, brake pads, stuff like that, and then you get uh, part of their subscription service, the Jaguar In Control Remote and Protect Package for five years, sixty thousand miles. That's like industry leading type of coverage yeah. right there, especially in the luxury segment. Yeah, especially, in the, I mean, BMW, I think gives you, what, two years? Something like something that. Something like that, yeah. So five years is incredible. And I think, I think they'll do well with this vehicle, mainly because, look, three series are everywhere, right? The and, Orange County can. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> They're everywhere. And if you buy this, at least for the first two years, you'll be the only one in your hood to have uh, an XC. Mm -hmm. yeah, and it's a beautiful car, too. It is, it, is, it, is a, it is a beautiful car. There you go. You can, Who needs B-roll? Yeah, yeah, these vlogs, you, you don't do B-roll, so you're just, you're just stuck looking at us and the road ahead. I'm sorry. We should have found some more handsome posts. Yeah. Or just cut to the outside. Cut to the outside, quick. Quick. All right, let's try this turn. I'm doing... Uh, I'm doing, uh, well, I'm doing something that I shouldn't be doing, which is going much faster than this turn. A little bit of front end push there, but otherwise it was really good. Here's where, like, I'm floored now. This is where That's the it. diesel is. That bicyclist could have passed us. <laughs> uh, that Maybe. That's a low blow. That's a low blow. That's pretty low, but yeah, it's... it's this uh, is the fuel economy model. Somebody yeah. that lives in yeah, the Midwest that. like I do, yeah. you get the diesel, you're going to be fine because you're getting 30 plus miles per gallon probably. Yeah. Yeah, it's totally adequate. And you'll be at sea level and it'll be perkier. Exactly. One other thing I wanted to mention, yeah. the diesel, it's very refined. That's this a good point. I'm not hearing, there's hardly any noise. Vibration is absolutely minimal. 
I'm feeling nothing through the floor pan or the seat. You know, Craig, you are absolutely right. If if I didn't know I was driving a diesel, yeah, I, I, I would have sworn this is like a two liter uh, gasoline powered. There's no, there's nothing that would give this up. There's no smoke. My biggest, of course, worry is that you know when diesels are new, they're very clean because they're using urea injection mm -hmm. um, to clean this. Up. I think they're using urea injection. Oh yeah, that's the only way. They don't want to be like a Jag. Or, uh, pardon me, like a Volkswagen. They don't like a Volkswagen, yeah. Uh, and so what what happens ten years from now, right? You, you go to Europe, and Europe is just clogged with like old French diesels that smoke <laughs> like you know a 1970s truck driver. Right, it's terrible. Yeah, just right. When, soot. When, yeah, when, when you stop keeping this engine up. So I don't know what it'll be like in ten years or twenty years, but right now it's incredibly clean. And having fun, dude. I know. Oh, look that, at that. that. We're just oh my god. Slicing through here. Yeah, we're going to the top of Independence Pass in the Rockies. So let me ask you this: What's your favorite Jaguar? I would say it would have to be the F-Type, but the coupe model, not the convertible. I'm not a big prop top guy, but the F-Type, beautiful. Yeah, here's, a, here's another bit of trivia. I'm just full of it today. Uh, okay. Let's you can, hear it. You can leave a comment it. there. Uh, what car do you think sells more in Southern California? The convertible or the coupe? Jaguar F-Type. I would assume the convertible because it's so cal, but I suspect that's the wrong answer. You're, you're exactly uh, right. Yeah. That's, uh, it, the, the, the coupe, as the British say, sells a lot more than the convertible. Interesting. I wonder why. Because I talked to people in California about that. Like, and they, it never rains, and they <laughs> literally said, ever. They said, first of all, when you're stuck in traffic, uh, it's no fun to have your top down. Uh -huh. So the only time, if you're like, apparently, you Californians know this, but this is what the person I talked to said, the only time you take the top down in California is on a beautiful night, when you're someplace away from traffic, uh -huh. that's the only time you take it down. And the other problem with the convertible in California, let's see if you can guess this, is the fact that it's made of, what's it made of? You should know this. Is it, is it's it, not a hard top. It's fabric. It's fabric, it? yeah. right? And a lot of people like like slicing up convertibles uh -huh. to get it, whatever they think might be in a hundred and whatever thousand yeah. dollar Jaguar. Yeah. So you don't feel secure and you never use it. Plus the, the coupe is sexier. Yeah. And you don't have the complexity and weight and all this other crap associated with the drop top. And it, it is one of the most beautiful coupes. I agree with you. I, I would love that car if I had $100,000. Would you get the, the 6 or the 8? That's a good question because they both. I don't know how Jaguar meets federal you know, noise requirements because they're so loud. Yeah, there's a little they sound so good. So even the even getting the six, you don't feel like you're suffering. But I would probably have to go with the eight, just because the rumble it makes. You can't beat an eight. I mean, well, there's that little button, right, that makes it even louder. And yeah. so, so what Jaguar is doing is unlike, let's say, Ford and the Mustang, where they're actually feeding engine note back into the car, yeah. which also BMW does, right? Oh yeah. Uh, well, they have the sound symposium, the little tube that runs to the intake, which they do. But this, then, not, no, but this is not just a tube, this is actually through the speakers. Yeah, like the, the EcoBoost model has that electronic yeah. fakery. And, and, and the 3 Series is the same thing. Oh. The, and even the M2, it feeds back, and not, ju not, not just ca noise cancellation, but actually engine notes, so mm. that you're listening to the speakers and not to the actual engine. Jaguar doesn't do that. What they do is um, they, they squirt a little bit of fuel into the, I think it's, uh, here I'm maybe on dicey ground, but I think it's somewhere in the exhaust manifold and mm -hmm. it gets that kind of crackle, poppy okay. sound. Nice. So it's fake but real, if, yeah. if, if that makes sense. Because it's coming right out the back then. Right, right, but it's not like it's not... Synthesized. Not, yeah, exactly. The engine is actually making that noise, even though it's making it for the theatric effect of it. It doesn't do anything for performance. Yeah. Oh, this is beautiful, This man. is a tight turn here. Yeah, this is a tight turn. Kick the back end around. Yeah. All right. Oh, there you go. Floor. Oh, no, nothing happened. Well, it's all wheel drive. Yeah, that's it's, you. It's not going to kick anything around. What a gorgeous ride. Yeah, so I love the F-Type. And actually, I just got to drive and review the F-Pace, and I was really pleasantly surprised by how good it is. You can go to tflcar.com and check that out. What was that website? tflcar.com. And we're almost at the top. If people want to go see your... How often do you do the skinny? It's his new show that he does. We try to do two a month, but with travel and everything else, it, it's a little bit less frequent than that. But it's a little editorial series we started. It's a fun, a fun way for me to ramble on about topics that perhaps I shouldn't. <laughs> well, you got to check out the the Lincoln review, and especially go check out the oh the MKX review, yes, the MKX review, and check out the bumper stickers that you guys have made for fake, that fake They're, bumper sticker. It's pretty funny, pretty <laughs> funny, uh, and of course. You can go to uh, YouTube slash AutoGuide, or you can go to AutoGuide.com, mm -hmm. you can see your work there. That's where you find my junk. Yeah, yeah. 
All right, man. We are at the top of the world we here. Made it. Look at this, 12,000, I think 12,095 feet. And uh, this is a good place to change drivers, so it's your turn to drive. And Sweet. I don't know if I have the energy at this altitude to get up out of the seat, but we'll give it a try. <laughs> and it's my turn to be passenger. It's a real treat to be able to drive and review a car in my backyard. I hope you enjoyed the fact that we got to drive it to the top of Independence Pass. I want to thank Craig Cole from Auto Guide for joining me in this review. And remember guys, check out TFLcar.com for more news, views, and of course, First Drive Jaguar Reviews. See you guys next time. Ciao. Meet the 2017 Jaguar F-Pace, Jaguar's first crossover or, as a company likes to say, a performance SUV. Now last year, Jaguar sold about 15,000 cars in America. Let me put that into perspective for you. Lexus sold about 100,000 of their RX model, which will compete directly against this. Now Jaguar is hoping that this car is gonna increase their sales significantly. Well, let's see what they've built by taking it for a ride.